So we've seen it twice in recent weeks. Republican lawmakers defending the infamous three-fifths compromise, which declared that slaves be counted as three-fifths of a person. The latest instance uh, just yesterday on the floor of the Tennessee State House, where a Republican representative claimed the deal was about ending slavery. Seen as Laura Jarrett, co-anchor of Early Start, joins us now with more. I can't believe this. Yes, you can. And here's why. All these conversations are coming up right now as Republican lawmakers across the country are pushing new bills to limit what schools can teach students about racism in this country. But some now find themselves in need of a history lesson. In this place, what it was Tennessee really State Representative Justin Lafferty took to the House floor Tuesday, delivering an impassioned speech during a debate over legislation aimed at limiting funding to public and charter schools if they teach critical race theory, a practice that sees racism entrenched in laws and institutions, and one that has become a prime target for some conservatives lately. I've heard referenced in here, as you all have, uh, the three-fifths compromise. I challenge everybody that can hear my voice, pull out a piece of paper, write down why that compromise was reached. Admittedly speaking off the cuff, Lafferty went on, defending what he called a bitter but necessary compromise, erroneously claiming it was a way to end slavery. The three-fifths compromise was a direct effort to ensure that Southern states never got the population necessary to continue the practice of slavery everywhere else in the country. By limiting the number of population in the count, they specifically limited the number of representatives that would be available in the slaveholding states, and they did it for the purpose of ending slavery. Yet the three-fifths compromise wasn't about ending slavery at all. It was one of a number of pro-slavery compromises baked into the Constitution during negotiations in 1787 about congressional apportionment and taxation. What Representative Lafferty failed to mention is that the compromise meant that a state could count three-fifths of its enslaved population toward its total population, even though enslaved people had no rights and certainly couldn't vote. That gave Southern states more representation and effectively more political power. Lafferty's speech received a round of applause from some of his colleagues, something that Democratic State Representative Antonio Parkinson tells The New York Times was, quote, especially stinging. Parkinson went on to tell The Times, quote, I thought it was horrible. I don't care if it's policy or how you're counting heads. There's nothing good about slavery. But Lafferty isn't the only one offering this ahistorical claim about the three-fifths compromise. Last month in Colorado, during a debate on civics education in schools, State Representative Ron Hanks said this. The three-fifths compromise, of course, was an effort by non-slave states to not to try to reduce the amount of representation that the slave states had. It was not impugning anybody's humanity. Just minutes before Hank spoke, fellow state representative Jennifer Bacon urged a different approach. As someone who is recognized as three-fifths, we do need to understand each other when we talk about these things. There's something to be said about the literacy of power in this country and all the steps that were taken to keep people from it. Now, CNN reached out to Representative Lafferty for a response to his statements on the floor Tuesday, but we haven't heard back yet. Interestingly, though, John, there are a bunch of bills on the table to stop schools from talking about systemic racism right now, but no one is pushing for new laws to teach students about the legacy of slavery or what's actually in the Constitution. You know, that might be helpful. Google is your friend. At this point. Wow. Uh, Laura Jarrett, thank you so much for that. Joining me now is Democratic State Representative Sam McKenzie, who represents Knoxville, Tennessee. Representative, you were in the room during this speech. What did it feel like when an elected member of your chamber went on about how great the three-fifths compromise was? Good morning. It, it was an eerie and sad, sad feeling because we're from the same county. But as he continued to, to talk, I'm like, he has this wrong. There, there, there's, there's nothing right about his conclusions. And to hear the round of applause just spoke to the to the lack of knowledge of the people uh, who are elected to, to write laws for our state. And, and this was just a bad bill. 
And it, it's unfortunate that, that it passed and it received those types of, of, of comments and, and applause. I feel like this is speaking to some larger issue in Tennessee and around the country now, which is to somehow suggest that, you know, parts of slavery, not so bad. What, well, you know, why are we going out of our way to teach slavery as this awful thing? It just, it just feels so strange. It is, it is. You know, to be honest, the bill that we were discussing got to the point that, that, that you were making, and that's it's that somehow history has to remain the same history that our grandparents had, that, that, that getting to a point to say that the uh, ruling people did everything right, and there was nothing systemic about 400 years of slavery and Jim Crow laws, that, that, that we can't even teach that and say that this is the way we arrive where we are in 2021. And it's, it, it's unfortunate that, that, that we don't, as, as a uh, legislator, don't want to teach our kids an accurate and full uh, display of, of, of what the history is that make this country a great country, but with a lot, a lot of dark, dark days. So I understand you had a chance to speak with Representative Lafferty after his speech. How did that go? Well, you know, I would say uncomfortable at first, but yeah, he and I, he and I have a a a, a, a relationship and a dialogue. So we had a very collegial conversation about it. Of course, we stand on two different sides of the uh, of his conclusion, but you know, his his facts were uh, correct. The South did want 100 percent. They did compromise at three fifths. But that's a horrible thing. And it had nothing to do with ending slavery. No, not at all. I mean, if anything, it empowered, gave the slave states even more power to dictate the first, you know, 80 years of U.S. history. <laughs> Representative McKenzie. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I appreciate you being with us. In, in some ways, I'm sorry you had to sit through that. Um, but thank you. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. And hopefully we, we can stop bringing these bad bills to the table.